and hello. Right, well, I've had an interesting few days. Uh, a lot of revelations, with all revelations and revelations, and, um, uh, you know, pretty big thing about myself, and pretty big thing for the whole world. Uh, obviously, I still allow the possibility that I'm wrong about both things. Somehow, maybe I'm being fooled. That has to remain a possibility. Um, but everything else is pointing towards the fact that I'm getting true information. Um, I watched the I watched Che Che Guevara's. Uh, it's called um, a day on a motorcycle. What's it called? motorcycle journey or something like that whereas when he was in his youth they, him and his friend went on a motorcycle journey all around South America um, they were of the frame of mind that South America should be one you know not all these nations just a mixed mixed races in one continent anyway um, there were some bits that really hit me emotionally. I mean, they could anyway, you know, with a film, whether I was that person or not. But no, they. I could almost, I could almost have the memories of this one specific bit where he swam across the Amazon River because he was volunteering at a leper treatment place and it was his birthday and it was the last day they were leaving the next day and they had the most of the infected people were on a separate on the other side of the river and this the seriously infected ones and the staff were on this side of the island anyway they just had a party they were on the side of the river with the staff and that and then he just suddenly you know everything was good it was all good and then he just suddenly wanted to swim across to the Amazon River that no one had ever done before apparently there and go and spend his the rest of the night on the other side and um, and his mate was going mad he's like, you're gonna do this you're crazy you know dad these asthma problems he's like your mum's gonna kill me he's, absolutely mad with him anyway he's swimming across and the people on the other side started to notice because it was dark that someone something was coming over and I get you know telepathy or whatever twigged and they were cheering him and so as he's swimming you <gasps> getting a breath and then under the water and you can hear the, the the cheer and the encouragement for him to carry on as he's getting nearer and uh, I just felt like I had a memory of that and it was quite weird because when I was five um, I nearly drowned and I wasn't bothered I was like got to die sometime so it was a, I don't know it's sort of there's a lot of things when I was watching about Che's life that's really fit in um, I watched the film um, was it film? No, it was a documentary on YouTube about his life. And this guy um, speaking about who's written a book about him. And it was getting to the events towards the end of his life. It was really... It was really sort of sitting home, maybe some of the feelings I've had in me. Like, especially from early childhood, that, you know, there was a feeling there. Why was that feeling there? And it was kind of making a lot of sense that that, you know, I was quite a mad little kid, sort of wanted to be in the army and, you know, from the age of four or something. <laughs> I was quite, and I think, you know, I, so Che Guevara's life, Che Guevara's life. I'm going on the supposition at the moment that that was me. So I had that life then, right? Now, in this life now, I've, you know, I, I, 
I was giving clear signs that violence was not going to, that violence was not for me. I did not want violence anymore. So I was fighting people up until about the age of 12, 13. I enjoyed fights. Fights were fun. <clears throat> You know, as long as I picked a fight with someone, I was pretty secure that I could beat. And But I remember it, there was a fight early on, I was about seven or eight or something, and there was a boy two years older than me, but, you know, he was a, a nerd, he wasn't a fighter, but I was encouraged to fight him and just thinking, wow, he's two years older than me. And I could inject this fear into him, I could just become aggressive and he would be scared and then it was just so easy to to win because when someone's scared they're backing away you just advance and you know they, what chance have they got but I remember his face and and that's what put me off fighting even though I didn't stop after that I didn't probably fight that much and I didn't, I mainly only wanted to fight people who wanted to fight, who whose face would go, you know, against me. That's then what I wanted to fight. And not someone again whose face went, you know, I didn't want that again. It, it hurt that I'd done that. Um, so that was a fine bit. And the... And the physical sports, because even though Che had this um, lung problem, he was still like brilliant rugby player and sports and swimming. You know, he's really good at sports. And I too have physical talent. Like um, I was, I won the sprint race at my sports day in primary school in my infant four or something, infant three. Um, may have been one of those and then by the end of primary school I was about fourth fastest some people had overtaken me but I was getting really into athletics I liked the um, thing we did at the time was uh, we did these little five star awards where you, it'd be like a mini decathlon or something like that and you and I loved doing that I wanted to be the next Daley Thompson but my athletics coach and I had no encouragement apart from they bought me some running spikes and allowed me but no one was encouraging me and my athletics coach was just a fat dick he was a fat dick <coughs> I mean how can you be inspiring when you're a massive fat <coughs> anyway so I, I got bored of that and started smoking but you know and there are times in my life where I've wondered oh how things might have been you know but I'm I did come to a point where I was so glad that those things happened that I did didn't go down those routes and and again in the army I went to the Norwegian army and um but after about nine months in I I went along to this sort of sergeant school to see about perhaps having a career in the army and I did the the tests and things and I was coming top um, I was over over the average of the swimming the running and the strength tests I was actually top in that whole group and they were so they really wanted me to stay but I had this girlfriend and I could really feel that I could I remember going to sleep one night I could really feel her anguish and like her not wanting me to go in a sense and I kind of I guess I keeled into that and I let that decide for me and I decide not to go and you know people were disappointed in me in a sense that I wasn't continuing a career in the army and there was also something my dad had said about people in the army they um you know, after such a long time of being, you know, eating it, you know, you haven't got to make many decisions, you know, when you eat and what you eat. And, you know, it's all, it's all done for you. Everything's put on for you. You're not having to make many decisions. 
And, you know, obviously if you're not making decisions and practicing making decisions, you may become indecisive. Anyway, so there was these things, these reasons I didn't follow what might have been. And only when I was getting into the meditation and connecting with God was I finally really happy that... <laughs> I'm just checking if it's on record. Finally, I'm really happy that um, things had worked out the way they'd worked out. Anyway, sorry about that, if you've heard all that shit before. Um, so it's kind of just nice to know, I think, what my previous life was, was the one. And in effect, when I was looking for it, I was, I started out, I thought, because I'd said on video last time, I don't know what I was in my previous life, but I'll find out and I'll make a video. Um, but I'm pretty sure about the, the life before that. Um, so I was, in a sense, I was kind of looking for that and then just kind of... So I wasn't really actually trying, weirdly. And and I've, Che Guevara's come up before as well a couple of times. He, he was one of the examples that had the R1B gene because he's got Irish blood in him, Che Guevara. I think that was said about him. So, I, you know, not completely Spanish and... Mayan or Incan or whatever, <laughs> um, but it's got some Irish Irish blood. Maybe that's where that R1B comes from. Don't know. But anyway, so his his name came up then. He's someone I've always, well, I, like I said in the previous video, I was Che Guevara. I think I said about how I was looking. Who's that person on the T-shirt? Because after I'd seen this thing, anyway. It's, sorry, listen to this hard enough. Right, what we're going to do, what we're going to do, right? We're going to do something that could make me look very stupid. Now, the other revelation, and it's not individual to me, that's for the whole world, is about these tribulation periods, and that, in a sense, um, you know, every 19 years is a new cycle, and that for about 10 years, or nine and a half, there's a there's a tribulation period. Now maybe some are worse than others and maybe there's some sort of scale going on, I'm sure. And then we have nine and a half years, say, of calm and rest, where there's just not stuff going on. If you wanted to start a revolution in the calm and rest period, you might as well forget it. People aren't going to be into it. But in the tribulation period, you know, the tribulation period is... A time of troubles, if you like, where people are challenged, but there is the opportunity to 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 face that challenge and do something great. All right. Also, there's the opportunity to do maybe something bad. Anyway, so we've got these dates here, and these dates are the midst of the tribulation. And in the midst of the tribulation is when, if you like, God's plan plays in and whoever's God is using at that time shines forth. And so you come into the tribulation. So, it's, you know, people are just going about their merry days. Everything's fine. And then the tribulation period begins. And it's like, it's like when the... The, the, the doubts come into people's minds or something, you know, that's... And if it's happening to everybody on the planet, imagine the effect, okay? It only has to be subtle, but imagine the effect. So gradually, after a couple of years, people are going like, so, something's not right, and pointing fingers, and we're all blaming each other, you know, we're blaming the government, the government are blaming the people, <laughs> right? And it causes all this, and there's a perfect demonstration of it in the film 13 Days, which is about the Cuban Missile Crisis in 57, uh, well, in 62. So it's the end of this tribulation period here, and the, uh, the, the problem that we nearly go to nuclear war is because the, the generals and that are not sure that the president is fully with it, and they start doing things so then the president's not trusting his generals. So even though the president's trying to deal with Russia, he's not even sure if his own generals are on board. And then you've got the same thing going on in Russia. Anyway, 
So in the midst of the tribulations comes like Saviour, so 57 is when Che Guevara and that lot took over Cuba. And then in 62, that, they, you know, this Cuban Missile Crisis built up to such a point and just fizzled out. And that's exactly where we are now. We, you know, all this Brexit stuff, all this stuff going on all around the world. It's, you know, it's built up to this huge, but it's been fading away, but people haven't noticed it's been fading away. And it's just going to fizzle out. And then it's going to take a year or so before people actually realise we are in a period of calm. Um, and then we'll get to 2028 and a new tribulation period will begin, but it will take a year or so for people to actually realise we're in it. Unless you know, my teachings, videos become uh, widespread. All right, so what we're going to do is, and I haven't looked yet, so this is why I could now look really stupid, but part of this, and I agree with it, is that Psalms... And this is from the Jehovah's Witnesses. They, the ones that have said that um, in 1900, the you know the end times were beginning, and that Psalm Psalms one is about the year 1900, and it goes up to Psalms 150, and it depicts like these end times tribulations. So. So then, so from what I've said here, Psalm 15, or 14, Psalm 14 is going to be about the year 1914. And Psalm 13 is going to be about the year 1913. So, um, you'd imagine that Psalm 13 will be a calmer one compared to Psalm 14. I don't know. Here we go. Psalm 13, I'm already wrong. <laughs> Prayer of the oppressed. How long, O Lord, will thou quite forget me? How long wilt thou hide thy face from me? How long must I suffer anguish in my soul, grief in my heart day and night? How long shall my enemy lord it over me? Look now and answer me, O Lord my God. Give me light to my eyes, lest I sleep the sleep of death. Lest my adversary say, I have overthrown him, and my enemies rejoice at my downfall. But for my part I trust in thy true love. My heart shall rejoice, for thou hast set me free. I will sing to the Lord, who has granted my, all my desire. Oh, I know. Let's read 14. Man's wickedness. The impious fool says in his heart, There is no God. How vile men are, how depraved and loathsome. Not one does anything good. The Lord looks down from heaven on all mankind to see if any act wisely, if any seek out God. But our, all are disloyal, all are rotten to the core. Not one does anything good. No, not even one. Shall they not rue it? All evil doers who devour my people as men devour bread and never call upon the Lord. There, there they were in dire alarm, for God was in the brotherhood of the godly. The resistance of their victim was too much for them, because the Lord was his refuge. If only Israel's deliverance might come out of Zion. When the Lord restores his people's fortunes, let Jacob rejoice, let Israel be glad. So I suppose there has been a change from 13 to 14. But and all this thing about Psalms being the years 1900, I suppose that there's still question marks over that. But um, let's read on. Psalms 15. O Lord, who may lodge in thy tabernacle, who may dwell on thy holy mountain, the man of blameless life who does what is right, and speaks the truth from his heart, who has no malice on his tongue, who never wrongs a friend, and tells no tales against his neighbour, the man who shows his scorn for the worthless, and the honours all who fear the Lord, and honours all who fear the Lord, 
who swears to his own hurt and does not retract, who does not put his money out to usury and takes no bribe against an innocent man. He who does these things shall never be brought low. Some can I just skip one? We've got sixteen and seventeen look quite I just want to see what nineteen looks like. Oh eighteen is a fucking long one. Um so at the let's read at the end of eighteen, the last few lines of eighteen. O God who grantest me vengeance, who layest nations prostrate at my feet, who dost Rescue me from my foes and set me over my enemies. Thou dost deliver me from violent men. Therefore, Lord, I will praise thee among the nations and sing psalms in thy, to thy name, to one who gives his king great victories and in all his acts keeps faith with his anointed king, with David and his descendants forever. So I, I really should have read it. I mean, I should read... I've read, I've read the whole Bible before, but... Um, you know, with your specific aim of what you're you're looking for. Uh, <clears throat> I'm not going to read too much. 19, uh, 19, Psalms 19. The heavens tell out the glory of God. The vault of heaven reveals his handiwork. One day speaks to another. Night with night shares its knowledge. And this without speech or language or sound of any voice. Their music goes out through all the earth. Their words reach to the end of the world. In them a tent is fixed for the sun, who comes out like a bridegroom from his wedding canopy, rejoicing like a strong man to run his race. His rising is at one end of the heavens. His circuit touches their farthest ends, and nothing is hidden from his heat. <sighs> so if we get to... Uh, 20, 24 should be the last day of Rev uh, trips in this time. 24. The earth is the Lord's and all that is in it, the world and those who dwell therein. For it was he who founded it upon the seas and planted it firm upon the waters beneath. Who may go up to the mountain of the Lord? And who may stand in his holy place? He who has clean hands and a pure heart, who has not set his mind on falsehood, and has not committed perjury, he shall receive a blessing from the Lord, and justice from God his Saviour. Such is the fortune of those who seek him, who seek the face of, of the God of Jacob. Lift up your heads, your gates. Lift yourselves up, you everlasting doors, that the King of glory may come in, who is the King of glory? The Lord, strong and mighty. The Lord, mighty in battle. Lift up your heads, your gates. Lift them up, your everlasting doors, that the King of glory may come in. Who then is the King of glory? The King of glory is the Lord of hosts. So yeah, that sounds positive. I'll just read the the titles. Uh, I mean, the titles aren't scripture. Are they? They're, they're, they're a summary that the... Whoever did this version. By the way, this is a special version of the Bible. What I've got a special version of the Bible is special because I can find no online version which fits this. It's supposed to be the net, but I tell you, it bloody isn't. The net is nothing like this. The net is so much more like the uh, NV, NIV. There are some words in here that are repeated in the Derby version of the Bible, um, but it's not consistent and it's mostly not. So I cannot find an online version of this Bible, and this Bible was given to me on my christening day in 1977, two months old. and. I'll make sure you can see this, you know I'm not mucking about. So, it's backwards, isn't it? I, it? This Bible has been verified by a lot of different, you know, it's 
basically all of the UK have accepted this and I did read the, uh, the preface and the introduction and everything because you know they did a proper job on this one and this was back in the uh, 1960s when people actually used to still work <laughs> like, like work hard go and work hard and just sit around chatting um, right, where are we? So twenty. So I just read the thing. So twenty-five, the source of lasting prosperity. Twenty-six, prayer f for a firm footing. I mean, this isn't good enough, is it? It need to be read. Twenty-seven, the cure for anxiety. Twenty-eight, prayer for mercy and help. Twenty-nine, Lord, Lord speaks in the storm. Thirty, self-confidence shaken. 31, Lord's unfailing love. 32, confession, forgiveness and happiness. Now, a new tribulation period will be starting in 33. 33, the Lord omnipotent. Shout for joy before the Lord, you who are righteous. Praise comes well from the upright. Give thanks to the Lord on the harp. That's pretty good. The Lord brings the plans of nations to nothing. He frustrates the counsel of the peoples. But the Lord's own plan shall stand forever. 34 is the Lord's goodness. 35 prayer for vindication. 36 man's sin and the Lord's righteousness. Deep in his heart sin whispers to the wicked man. See I think that's what's going on in the tribulation is is you know you find yourself with these challenges that you haven't always got and you're thinking where is it coming from and I think that's that's the thing that's when we go oh somebody else 37 advice of an old man that's a long one 38 prayer in affliction so 38 would be the midst O Lord, do not rebuke me in thy anger, nor punish me in thy wrath, for thou hast aimed thy arrows at me, and thy hand weighs heavy upon me. Thy indignation has left no part of my body unscarred. There is no health in my whole frame because of my sin, for my in iniquities have poured over my head. They are a load heavier than I can bear. My wounds fester and stink because of my folly. I am bowed down and utterly prostrate all day long. And anyway, it's pretty bad, isn't it? Uh, my friends and my companions shun me in my sickness. Those who mean to injure me spread cruel gossip. It's all pretty bad. I'm a good time. I make no secret of my iniquity and am anxious at the thought of my sin. But many are my enemies, all without cause. And many are those who hate me wrongfully those who repay good with evil. But Lord, do not thou forsake me. Keep not far from me, my Lord. Hasten to my help, O Lord, my salvation. Absolutely, that's what you need to be leaning on. 39, the brevity of life. 40, thanksgiving and petition. 41, prayer for healing. And then it goes book two, you see. I mean, this could be a whole load of crap, this Psalms being the years from 1900 <laughs> you know let's let's skip a little bit for I won't spend too much longer on this let's get to uh, 52 and just read the titles well 51 prayer for forgiveness 52 where wickedness leads 53 man's wickedness 54 God is my helper 55 a friend's disloyalty 56, in God I trust. 57, prayer for God to show himself. No, I'm not getting anything from this. Uh, let's just go to present day. I'm going to have to read these and find if there's stuff in them if when I can be asked. And that probably isn't going to happen. Book 5, okay, so they're separated into different books as well. 
Dum, 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 dum. So 119 is the longest chapter in the whole Bible. And I have read that recently. There's a lot about keeping God by your side and everything. It's like... Uh, it's like uh, one whole page, two, three whole pages, four whole pages and a bit more. 120. So this would be next year. Prayer of an Exile. I called to the Lord in my distress and he answered me. O Lord, I cried, save me from lying lips and from the tongue of slander. What has he in store for you, slanderous tongue? What more has he for you? Nothing but a warrior's sharp arrows or red-hot charcoal. Hard is my lot, exiled in Mesek, dwelling by the tents of Kedar. All the time that I dwelt among men who hated peace, I sought peace, but whenever I spoke of it, they were for war. Yeah. <coughs> All right, well, I don't know what I'm going to do now. <laughs> what did I expect? I don't know, I thought Psalms was shorter. Um, I suppose the main reason for this video is because I've just made a load of load of short videos and I just thought maybe an update was needed. So yeah, I. Why do I why do I believe in this? Why do I believe that? Separating revelations into five sections actually brings out the right timeline. I suppose partly is because it's each thing I've done towards this has revealed more. So it's been a, it's been leading towards more. It's been opening up more information and understanding. And, you know, this thing about being periods of calm and periods of tribulation just makes so much sense with what I see that's happened in my own life. I mean, I'm over 38, so I've had two full cycles. I was born in the end of a cycle, 77 to 1981, so by the time I was four, five, we were into a peace period, and then, you know, everything was fine in a sense, like, in a sense, like, things would be fairer, like, if you did something bad, yeah, you had something bad happen to you. But in the time of the tribs, you could get, you know, it could be mixed up, it could be, it could be confusing and unfair, or, you know, it seems unfair. And then the next one starts in 1990, and I would have been... In like the third year at school, so 13, 14. And I do remember being like at that, about that time, and it's when I became a bit miserable, and I was just. So I saw that before as just being, you know, that's the time of life, and that probably is as well, you know, probably added to it. But I just remember having this feeling that, you know, all this stuff we're taught at school, that, is that it? There must be more to it than than this, and that's when I uh, first tried cannabis and saw that there was a kind of another realm to be explored in a sense, and it gave me a nice feeling that there was there was more to know, much more. So, and by the time we get 
to 1995, you know, now I'm nearly 18, nearly an adult. Wasn't the uh, Jill Dando thing going on then? Or oh, I'm 17 or something. And I remember feeling like, I remember in the midst of that, feeling like the things were changing, but I was quite excited about it. Um, me and my soulmate, we talked about things being spacious. We we had both had this feeling, and the world looked spacious, like futuristic in a way. And but it was a bit weird as well. And you know, the Jill Dando death was that nineteen ninety five. Or was it a bit later? But I haven't really... I mean, Tony Blair is in this one. Obviously, as the bad guy. <laughs> Obviously. I'm not quite sure who the good guy was. It was me! He! <laughs> no, I don't know. But this one. This one. I... I've played a part in this one. I have. By... Even though I've just been here in my room and by bringing God, by connecting with God and bringing God into this existence, into my existence, into my awareness, even in this, you know, physical world, bringing it in and effect. And, yeah, I just, I just... You know, I've been saying, I was sort of saying that, you know, because I was thinking tribulation was a seven-year thing, and I was saying in 2016, you know, we're past the worst. You know, we're, things are still going to be happening, but getting slightly better. So I think my um, my core feeling was right, you know, that it's, it's, it's fading out in a sense, whether it is like that, like a wave, it probably is. So, coming to 2019, we must be very near the end of it. And it parallels with uh, 1962. This is right at the uh, Cuban Missile Crisis, you know, it's, it's, it's at the end of October when, they're, when they're the peak, if you like, or the, the point of where it was make or break, and it was, it was fine. It worked out fine, fizzled out. As far as most people were concerned, you know, they wouldn't have been fully aware. That, although they had, did go public and with the nuclear warning and stuff, and kids were hiding under tables and stuff, and then nuclear drill, <laughs> what good that would do. Um, but yeah, it fizzled out, and that's what I feel is happening now. And we'll just get this Brexit thing uh, go in, and but what what will cease? is that, that, you know, that um, adversary for every individual, you know, they, that's going to quiet down. But it's going to come back. And when it comes back in 2028, this is all, what we've been through now has just been the, the sixth trumpet, the sixth seal, the sixth, we're in the set. We're gonna. It's gonna be the seventh. So if I'm wrong, then things won't quieten down. But I don't think I'm wrong. I'm not wrong. There will be a period of calm and rest to recuperate. All right. Because this is how we grow. We're challenged. Makes us want to grow, need to grow. Yeah. I feel like this has probably been a bit of a shit video. But who cares? <laughs> it is what it is. I'm going to say goodbye for a bit. Okay, bye.